Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans, and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Steppin' Out on WYES. Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Poppy. Hey, hey. Great to see you. Love your dress, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Actor, poet, performance, and visual artist, Jose Torres Tama, <laughs> who is hosting and producing a monthly Latin late night live show at Cafe Istanbul. That's this Tuesday. Hello. Good to see you, Jose. Hello. Also with us, Doug McCash, who covers the arts and culture scene. He was just with How us last week <laughs> for the time speaking to you, New Orleans advocate, but he's here for an extra good reason, not that we need one, but and Alan Smason. Hey, Alan, of course, of theatercriticism.com and the Crescent City Jewish News. Welcome. Glad to be here. Poppy, sorry to hear of the passing of a longtime restaurateur. Yes, indeed. Roy Gus Jr., who, of course, was the great-great-grandson of Antoine himself, passed away Monday after a fairly lengthy battle with cancer. And of course, mm -hmm. Roy was really something. You know, after Roy Alciator passed away in the 70s, Roy really filled a place. Antoine's needed him at that time. And he kind of spiffed things up and became the figurehead and wrote that great cookbook. And then that became his muse. And he moved into cookbooks, and from there he became a photographer. He was just one of those sort of geniuses who could channel any sort of amuse. Yes, um, he was a great guy. He also, yeah, the photographer. That was really uh, yes. a whole other skill, wasn't it? The it last really decades was. of his life, that's what he was involved with, was photography. Yeah. But of course, there he is in his prime as the proprietor of Antoine. Absolutely, with the bow tie. Mm -hmm. Now on to something ex extra special, too. Well, I would like to make a toast <laughs> in Roy's yeah. memory. And this is something very special that we're toasting with. It's, um, well, it's an old fashioned that you can tell us about, Peg, but it's made with by water <laughs> bourbon, which is new from 73 Distillery, coming out on the 18th. Here's to Roy. Yeah. Yeah. Really, and uh, we'll, he'll definitely be missed. Um, Alan, thank you for um, helping us with making these for us today. And we actually have the recipe that we'll send you all. I think we've got it full screen, too. And, there, and there's the bottle. But don't you love it? They've been naming, 7-3's been naming uh, some of their libations uh, after neighborhoods. There That's they are. That's what it's all about. Gentilly, <laughs> gin, you know, you name it. Every neighborhood's got uh -huh. their own liquor. But um, I'm sure this recipe probably looks pretty familiar for an old-fashioned that's yes, wonderful indeed. and we yes, made it indeed. by the book but if it's too quick for you to write all that good stuff down though all you have to do is email me at plaboard at wyes.org and Poppy you have one more thing you wanted to mention as well yes right? indeed there's a new delivery service you know with COVID kind of coming back at us again maybe people are looking for new delivery options this is Dinner Saint the patroness of Blue Monday um, they will deliver dinner to your your door between 4 and 6 p.m. every Monday. You order by Friday. It's New Orleans style comfort food. Red beans and rice, yakamen, mm -hmm. a delicious chicken on Dewey gumbo. It's only $12 for a meal. It comes all ready to heat with instructions and a reusable tote that they pick up again with each delivery. And we have a special code if you just use Louisiana Eats when you order it, your first meal is free. Ooh. It's a $4 delivery charge. That's a deal. Okay, thank you, Poppy. And moving over to Jose. Jose, in these challenging times, you've come up with a once in a every month lift at Cafe Istanbul, haven't you? Yes, so 
Theater Without Borders, Teatro Sin Fronteras, that's what it means, Teatro Sin Fronteras, Latin Late Night Live. Um, I've always been a big fan of those late night shows, and within all my performances, there's always a comedic element. So I wanted to do this to amplify the voices of our Latin people. This is going to be the Katrina 16 as we're approaching the 16th anniversary. But we're amplifying the voices of Latin artists, activists, poets, performers, and musicians. We just had Margie Perez for a premiere on July 20th, and this one coming up on Tuesday, August 17th features Gauchos del Tango, an amazing tango duo with Yuleni Velasquez and her husband, Michael Ward Bergman. They're really dynamic. I know and we have some photos we're going to show while you're talking Marta to. Aguirre. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, you've got uh, quite a great mix there. Yes, and once again, Gauchos del Tango. Tell us about this young lady. Oh, Yuleni Velasquez is amazing. She's an educator. She's a classical vocalist, and she performs these amazing, what they call tango negros, these um, uh, black tangos with her husband, Michael Ward Bergman, who actually went all over South America, and especially Argentina, to study these um, tango music. And you have your own house band, don't you? Yes, we have Raices. Raices is a folkloric Latin American music band. They play music of the Andes with Roberto Carrillo and his wife, Maria Rodriguez. They're amazing, really dynamically uh, different for a kind of house band. Andean music all over Mexico as well. Chile, Argentina. This week we're doing um, a tribute a little bit to Violeta Parra, the iconic poet and singer. Basically, she's our Joan Baez of Latin America. Now, doors open at 6.30. Okay, and here you, you've got Miss Narcisse here too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maritza Mercado Narcisse is simply one of the most amazing choreographers and dancers. I believe she's lesser known here, and I'm a big fan, so she's gonna be on performing. Again, we're always presenting um, musicians, activists, dancers, choreographers, performers, and poets. All right, and, you, and there's a sliding scale, I understand. Tell me about that in terms we of admission. Make, we wanna make it affordable. You know, these are tough pandemic times. Mm. We're grateful, let's make sure, give a shout out to Chuck Perkins. He's hosting us, and you know, um, we wanna make sure that people are there. We open the doors at 6.30 p.m. But we want to make it affordable, simply on a sliding scale from $5 to $20, whatever you can offer. We'll have a Venmo thing. If you want to give us more, we'll take it. And the <laughs> other, and the, mon the modest funds that we're collecting are going to go to honorariums for the artists being presented. All right. Thank you, Jose. It's so great to have you. And we'll talk more about you and what you've been up to in just a little bit later. But now let's move over to, move over to Doug. Doug, it's always great to see you, but you are back to back this week because sadly we lost a, a very a, a amazing artist in our midst. It's been a tough week. Uh, among other things, Mario Villa passed away. And, uh, and Mario Villa was one of the most popular artists in New Orleans, one of the pop most popular personalities on the art scene. He died at 68 of um, complications after heart surgery. Mm. And we will miss him. Um, Mario was one of um, Mario's furniture, his jewelry, um, his sculpture were brilliant. They were absolutely perfect for the era and the city. Um, by the 1970s, when he got his start, the world had grown tired of modernism. After 30 years of square ge geometry, squares, circles, and rectangles, everyone was ready for a little fun, and Mario was just the person to provide it. He uh, studied architecture at Tulane University, and as an architect, he understood uh, the new postmodern style. And as a New Orleanian, he understood neoclassicism, uh, his work was a brilliant blend of both. He made simple welded iron beds, tables and chairs that looked like they might have come from the ruins of Pompeii, <laughs> and then added fun flourishes like palm leaves and heroic busts and birds. His work was smart but unpretentious. Um, it seemed so current but classical at the same time. Uh, it was elegant but wryly humorous. Um, he really got New Orleans, and, uh, and we loved him for it. Absolutely. And, Jose, you said that you knew Mario, and describe what um, a gallery uh, <laughs> showing was like at, at his place on Magazine Street. Mario was the gallery you wanted to end up at. Basically, up on Magazine Street, whenever they had the, um, the Art for Art's Sake nights or, or just the regular um, 
openings. Uh, Mario, as you could see, also a very handsome, beautiful man, but his parties were fabulous. You wanted to end up at Mario Villa's gallery at the end of the Magazine Street Walk because then he broke out some of the better liquor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, it's, to be honest with you, Doug just mentioned this to me and it was news to me. And yeah, um, what a challenging transition, but a beautiful man. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And he certainly will be missed. And moving over to Alan with some news. And we have to also talk about it. one of our community treasures also lost this week. I'm talking about, of course, Adele Goche. Yeah. Uh, again, Adela, the storyteller. Uh, she was uh, 73, a long and distinguished career on the stage as one of the dashiki divas who came out of Free Southern Theater and also, of course, uh, the dashiki theater. Uh, funeral plans uh, have, have not been uh, made yet. But again, our condolences to all of her family and friends. There she is from an Anthony Bean uh, a production as Aunt Esther uh, from Gem of the Ocean. You know, just a great talent. And of course, in a lot of films as well. Uh, uh, she was on TV and Law and Order just last week. A bunch of us saw her there. So uh, she, again, will be missed. And we uh, uh, extend our condolences to all of her family and friends. Meanwhile, if there was ever any doubt that Cutting Edge Theater could actually mount Sunset Boulevard, those doubts have been silenced because they are doing it now. There's only really uh, four performances left for Thais Kitchen, so you see there, to prevail is Norma Desmond, the fading silent film goddess whom we meet with one look. Uh, Kitchens is quite good in the role. She carries herself with the charm and grace of a movie star of the past. Her love interest is Joe Gillis, the dashing but jaded Hollywood scriptwriter who catches her eye. Matthew Welch plays Gillis with enthusiasm and great assertiveness. And then, of course, Ronald Brister plays the overprotective butler Max von Meyerling, and it's all a, a special role for him, uh, especially his greatest star of them all. Also of note, is Jovan Jojo Matthew. Uh, she really knocks it out of the park as Betty Schaefer, a young love interest for Joe. The two fall in love while working on a script together and they sing about it in Too Much to, in Love to Care. Um, and here's a shot of them, uh, you know, all together, all the leading actors. You've got Jojo and Matthew and uh, Thais and uh, Ron all together right after uh, their performances at Cutting Edge Theater. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, there are only a few uh, shows left. This is one to see. And uh, these guys are really great performances. Uh, uh, again, check out JoJo. She's showing off the fact that she may be a featured performer, but she's leading lady material. Meanwhile, BB Stage Door Canteen at the National World War II Museum is getting ready to welcome none other than the man in black, Johnny Cash tribute artist Terry Lee Goffey will be channeling him in September. So go check that out as well. Tickets are available for that right now on their website. And tickets will go on sale soon for their tribute show to Louis Armstrong in October, starring Wendell Brunius wow. and wow. Tom Hook. So this is going <laughs> to be called Swing That Music. We're looking forward to that. Tickets will be available soon. Not yet available right now, though, but, but look for that soon. And JPS, by the way, uh, Peggy, is holding the first of their free Zoom community conversations this Sunday. This will be on God of Carnage on Parenting and Politics. The play by Yasmina Reza will open next month at the West Wego Performing Arts Theater. And so they want you to get involved and, and check it out. These will be conversations on Zoom held prior to each of their productions. Okay, using Zoom to our advantage. Yes. All right. Thank you. Back to Poppy with some restaurant news. We're going from whiskey to wine now, and we're going to talk about the Copper Vine Wine Experience. Now, of course, Copper Vine is that beautiful restaurant where Maley's used to be, down on Poydras Street. And they've got this incredible opportunity for a private party, basically. But it just takes a party of four to go in for a full wine experience. There's 13 different tasting themes hmm. that range from between $30 to $100 per person. Each one of them comes with possible food pairings at $12 additionally, stuff like French shallot soup and tuna tartare, the fig and blue cheese canapé, divine. 
And so if you've had so much fun wine tasting at Copper Vine and you're hitting the road, we'll go right out to the airport. And new at Concourse A and B is Vino Volo, which you'll find at all the best airports in America. There's a lot of lovely wine choices and you can have a trio of tastes there for just $18. There's lots of sophisticated food pairing choices like a crab cake and avocado salad. Look how beautiful that is is or a melted Gruyere ham sandwich and there's the Moisant marketplace which is part of the business right there with a grab and go yummy food coffee all the way to bottles of fine wine if you just need to carry along that perfect hostess gift or you're in the mood for a whole bottle of wine at the airport. So. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Sounds good. Poppy, I'm still thinking about that uh, fig, blue cheese fig canapé. Oh, Peggy, that had my name all <laughs> over it. With some Me red too, wine, how kiddo. perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. And moving back over to Jose. Jose, you are, of course, a self-employed performance, visual artist, so many things, poet. And um, you are certainly representing representative of times have been challenging. I know we're going to talk a little bit about this upcoming book that you've had, but uh, some challenges there. But you did have, what, a spark of good news with a residency at the Joan Miller Center. Is that true? The Joan, Joan Mitchell. Mitchell Joan Center. Mitchell Center. I was so okay. deeply grateful. That was the best news that I had in the fall. The residency began October 16th to February 3rd. If you, rem if you see, I recall these dates because it was so really moving because it's been a tsunami of cancellations. I was just letting Doug know the date is in grind in my psyche, March 16, 2020, when the lockdown came locally and then nationally, and everything got wiped out. The Taco Truck Theater, we were going to be at the Detroit Institute of the Arts uh, in Detroit, of course, the amazing museum there, and the, the solo show, Aliens, Immigrants, and Other Evildoers, I was about to go international with Toronto International Latino Theater Festival and also a hop over across the Atlantic to London, Liverpool, and Wales and other projects. So yeah. it's been a challenging pandemic time. So, so, so much that to hear it. And let, you know, it brought this, me to the emotional edge. I'm, I'm sure it did. And I'm sorry, I just wanted to be sure that we mentioned, though, your upcoming book as well. And also information, there's your website. If you want to help Jose, there are ways to do it because uh, he has lots of things that are available for sale. But tell us a little bit about this book before we move on. Okay. Yes, and, and please, let's make sure we give kudos and shout outs to the 2020 New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation uh, community documentation grant that I received to make this happen. This is 10, year pro 10 years worth of photographs. I began in 2010 photographing the Congress of Day Labors all the way to 2019, and um, it's been a 10-year project documenting the public protest, and it's really to honor the Latin American immigrant reconstruction workers who have been part of our epic rebuilding and been part of the rebirth. They've given their love, labor, and um, blood to the rebirth of the city, and these photographs honor them. There's a section called Children of Resistance that also documents um, the children that are part of the movement. A lot of people don't know about my photography, you know, but I've had a Minolta a long time ago from the 80s, and of course these are all digital. But yeah, this book is forthcoming, and I'm grateful to the support of the Jazz and Heritage Foundation. It is so great to visit with you. We wish you better days, <laughs> Jose, and good, good luck with Tuesday night, too. And in 1999, WYS produced a special for HGTV based on the beloved book, New Orleans Elegance and Decadence by Richard Sexton and Randy Delahanty. We profiled five homeowners who were featured in the book, and Mario Villa was one of them. Here's a feature on Mario from the show. He was then living in a house on Moss Street alongside Bayou St. John. The New York Times once compared Mario Villa's home to a setting for an opera. The early 19th century cottage is located on a picturesque body of water named Bayou St. John in the mid-city neighborhood of New Orleans. Villa has lived here for 12 years. Outside, there's little hint of the opulence within what is essentially a modest dwelling of eight small to medium rooms. I want people, when they come to the, ro to, to the door, to surprise themselves and, you know, a little, little house can be a beautiful house if you put love in it. It is the parlor that's truly a standout. Since I was close to the water here, we have the bayou in front of us, and I saw the grand 
uh, canal in Venice. So I want this feeling of this room to be an old Venetian palazzo running down. Villa has furnished his home with 18th and 19th century works of art, much of it from Italy and France. His passion for collecting beautiful things came at a very early age. My father chose my, a very famous painter uh, to become my godfather, and he gave me a, the, best, the first painting when I was born. My father said, that make me into a collector. He said, and the first words I have around my mouth was, was in mommy or daddy, was I want that. Villa's diverse collection also includes art from Latin America. A fanciful chair by Mexican artist Pedro Friedeberg. Works by Matisse. And only occasionally Villa's own creations. The piece uh, underneath the, another of the room and tapestry, you know, in the living room, uh, is celebrate life. It's like a New Orleans carnival parade, or it's a parade coming into New Orleans, celebrating life, you know, there's horses, and there's this beautiful woman dancing on top of the horses, that kind of festivity day. It's very important to Via to provide the proper setting for what he has accumulated over the years. To create the move around this house, uh, a very special, uh, uh, effect, we use museum lighting. Uh, then they are laser beam lighting, uh, low voltage. What the light does, it creates an uh, ambience when, because they don't produce any light glare. The light will shine until it hit the object, giving that object a magical touch. Villa had to use some decorating magic of his own after realizing that the wallpaper in the library was glued to the plaster and too costly to remove he painted over the existing wallpaper to resemble an almost marbleized pattern. In the master bedroom are other examples of Mario Villa's own work, including the bed. With a style that is also influenced by ancient classical designs, Villa's rendition of a personal computer storage unit is impressive. In this room, he decided to scrape the walls until they were bare. Those efforts received rather mixed reviews from one family member. My mother called it the, uh, the uh, poverty room because it looked like a rundown place. Uh, I love it. Uh, the, the feeling of the room is you have a lot of patina. In the master bathroom, Via created the wall treatments using a swag pattern based on an ancient Roman design. So I took, I took that motif and, and uh, deep uh, old canvas in, in, in plaster and, and did the room with that effect. To, to make it look very old, to, to give the room a feeling because that room was all for mica and plastic. In the guest bathroom, Via continued the Roman theme by using one of his sculptures as a fountain over the wash basin. But his favorite room in the house is actually outside. Located in the side yard with a great view of the bayou is a porch or terrace. I love to sit there because I feel like a little, little, I don't know, by your man uh, sitting in a terrace or looking at the water. Outside and inside, Via's taste reflects a variety of styles. Don't be afraid of mixing uh, different periods of art and furniture. You know, if they are, good, if they are chosen by, by you and you have taste, everything will kind of mix together. Tug, a final word? Just that, in addition to being an artist and designer, he also was a gallery owner and introduced a lot of uh, the next generation of uh, young contemporary artists. So, yeah. there you go. Thank you so much. And moving back over to Alan. Well, last week we postponed the uh, slated uh, talk with Brant Blocker so we could have a better show. We needed some pictures, etc. In its place, we had uh, Robbie Sherman and Brett Golden of the new Sherman Theatrical Company that's just been formed featuring the music of the Sherman Brothers, who you remember from Mary Poppins and Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, etc., uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, and they are going to be also associated with the music of Al Sherman, who was the grandfather. But Robbie Sherman is Robert Sherman's son. Uh, again, we had that followed up with a talk with Brian Sands about a brand new series of grants that's being given out uh, for production companies in the area in honor of our two local actresses who we lost last year due to the uh, pandemic, uh, and that namely is uh, Carol Sutton and, of course, uh, Sherry Marina. Uh, these grants are going to be given out 
this year in honor of Carol, next year for Sherry Marina, and uh, the grants for the initial foundation grants will be given out on August the 26th at the Samuel Dubois Cook Theater at Dillard University at 6 o'clock. Uh, it's open to the public. Brian Sands is being assisted in this effort by Wanda Ruzan. Next year, again, Sherry Marina, we understand the memorial grants will go up to $12,000. So $6,000 to start this year, $12,000 next year. And we don't know exactly where the limit is on these things, but it's going to be fantastic. It's going to encourage uh, uh, actors of diversity to, to play some classic roles. So even Greek roles or Shakespearean roles, uh, production companies will be uh, given money to encourage that kind of interaction. So we're looking forward to that as well. Now, meanwhile, don't forget the NOLA Theater talk shows that we have coming up. We have uh, uh, these going to be broadcast on the uh, NOLA Theater Folk Facebook group, the theatercriticism.com Facebook page, and my own YouTube channel. Brant Blocker will be on Friday, August the 20th. And then Victor Andrews, who writes for the Times-Picayune New Orleans uh, Advocate, who's been doing a number of previews and again, uh, you know, doing a great job getting people uh, interested in upcoming theater productions, et cetera, is going to be our guest on that Monday night, the 23rd. So keep that in mind. Now, for virtual viewing, very quickly, Lisa Loeb and Beth Wishney uh, are two of the people who are heralding uh, the uh, 10 mini musicals about last year's pandemic and living through a virtual lens. It's called Together Apart. It's free, a benefit for actors' fun. Keep that in mind. And then we have... Uh, Aaron Tveit, who recently sold out his live concerts at the Barrington Stage Company. There he is on stage in Moulin Rouge. The star will be available to virtual audiences via streaming on demand for four days. At the link that you see there, it is $35. Okay, thank you so much. And now time for Picks of the Week. Poppy. If you're not making that wine voyage out to the airport and you want to take a trip, you can take a virtual island cruise the third year in a row with Allison Vega Noel at Station 6. Every week, the, the island changes, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Jamaica, and Cuba, and it benefits the Elkhorn Conservancy Coral Reef Restoration. All righty. Jose. Mm -hmm. We featured Margie Perez on our show for Teatro Sin Fronteras premiere on July 20th, and she is upcoming at 3090 on Frenchman Street, Margie Perez and her funk band. Oh, so, you know, Margie is another one that's amazingly, um, you know, multi-singer uh, and instrumentalist. Uh, you know, so she's got her funk band. Go check them out. Thank you. Alan. Well, got to tell you that Lin-Manuel Miranda has done it again. He's knocked it out of the ballpark, if I can use that phrase one more time. But he has Vivo right now on Netflix. This is a work that is a new animated film for children of all ages. Uh, and, and, and it's fantastic. I got to tell you, some of the other people in there are, are, are Gloria Stefan. Of course, he was in Hamilton and in the Heights. He is an Academy Award nominated songwriter for Moana, but he just may have earned his EGOT with this one. Go check it out. <laughs> All right, I'll thank see you. At the theater. And my quick pick New Orleans clarinetist Tim Laughlin will pay tribute to George Lewis, Pete Fountain, and other legendary clarinetists with a concert that's on Sunday at 6 30 p.m. Go to bkhouse.org for tickets. Next week, photographer on our show, Judy Cooper, along with the NOLA. String Kings, John Rankin, Matt Rohde, and Don Vappy. Thank you all so much, my little <laughs> pals here, and thank you for watching. Good night. is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Steppin' Out on WYES.